Hello everybody, Future Artist1234 is back with another episode of How to Edit in After Effects, aka How to Edit Like a Boss, and I'm here with part two of the basics. And last week's episode, we went over the interface and the very basics of it. And this week, I'm going to go a little bit more in depth and tell you guys more about it, especially the timeline. So first off, I imported some footage here, and I'm going to just drag it over here to make a composition. And as you can notice already, these frames here are these parts right here of the f of the um, timeline, like from zero to maybe let's say this is ten are green, which means they have already been rendered out. Before I did this video, I kind of rent of just like sk uh, skim through the video and rendered a few of them out. And when you render frames out by either ramp previewing, playing, or just either just going frame by frame, they're gonna start turning green. And if they're green, that means when you play it, it's gonna, it's rendered out. It's gonna play perfectly. It's gonna play fine, and they're rendered out. But for some places like here, they're not rendered out. So if you try and play it, you're gonna have to render it out first. And you see that's why it's going so slow. And on some frames, they look blue, and those are frames that aren't that have been rendered. But like as time passes, as you move around, it's gonna turn blue, and they're not necessarily like not rendered. Like they're not gonna be as slow as non-rendered frame but it's gonna go faster as you can see it's a little bit faster than when we try to render the empty frame as you can see and if we go to that part it starts slowing down a little bit it was pretty hard to notice but it slowed down a little bit and the same thing happens when if you double click on a video here I didn't tell you guys last time but if you double click on a video you get to preview the video itself without going to the timeline so let's say this video is not in the timeline, but if we double click it, we could preview it right here. And same thing with here. After I preview, it's showing when you preview a file, it's showing green when those frames have been rendered. And if they haven't been rendered, they just not they're colorless. So I'm gonna just gonna stop it there. And I just, I don't think I told you guys how to stop it when it's rendering. All you gotta do is just click somewhere else, or just click on it again, and it just stops the round preview. So let's just play that as you can see it's pretty playing pretty smoothly but these frames we're gonna see haven't been rendered so uh, it started slowing down and one clip contest they have 300 frames per second which is amazing if you guys if you went over here and thought that was a error or something but no this is actually a 300 frame video but anyways let's move on to something else so if you guys have noticed this little triangle, if you click it, it's going to show transform and audio. And I'm going to go over here so you can see a little part of the video instead of just the black black background. If you go on transform, it's going to have a bunch of settings. Anchor point, position, scale, rotation, and opacity. So basically, anchor point is this little circle with those four lines. One over here, one over here, one over here, one over here. And I, and I know that's hard to see, but... I'm gonna make it bigger. Oh, actually, it doesn't make that bigger, but you know what I mean. Right there, you see that? One, two, three, four. It's like a little cross with a circle in between them. In there. So what that is? That is the anchor point. If you let me just go back to fit. If you move that around, that's gonna move the anchor point. And and After Effects, it also changes the position of the video. But you could just quickly fix that by just moving it back. But anyways, what the anchor point is is uh where the middle of a rotation is so let me just reset this uh, if you click reset here it resets all the things to normal if you rotate right now the anchor point is the middle it's gonna rotate with that this here being the middle of the rotation so as you can see the rotation is going pretty smooth it's pretty going pretty okay I mean you know what I mean it's just going be it's rotating based on the middle over here but now I'm gonna change the anchor point over here and here this is the position this is how you change the position of the um, video itself now that I change this here it's gonna change it's gonna be a little different when rotating and actually you can't tell that much of a difference let me just reset that let me try it let me change the anchor point massively and I haven't told you guys this but this is uh, horizontal and this is vertical just sorry about that I haven't told you guys that already but this is the horizontal positions and this is the vertical and on some settings it's gonna have a third one which is usually the X I mean this Z coordinates so this is the X this is the Y and that's gonna be the Z 
And I know that's confusing, so don't worry about it unless you know what I'm talking about. But anyways, let's get back to the anchor point. If I move the anchor point, let me just move a lot. And then now, let me just... And if you want to, like, change the video back to to the normal thing, you can actually try and do it yourself or just put this, the number the anchor point has. 965. As you can see, the video has been fixed and the anchor point has been moved over here. And now when I rotate, as you guys can see, the rotate has is based on the middle over here it's not like it was before when it was rotating uh, differently and I'm sorry I can't show it how I'm gonna just uh, you guys can see the difference this rotation and as you can see a lot of here is like left out because the anchor point is set all the way to the right so the left side is like pretty much empty when you rotate it like 90 degrees so I'm gonna show you 90 degrees when the anchor point is over here and I'm gonna show you 90 degrees when the anchor point is in the middle as you can see 90 degrees is equal on both sides equal amount of emptiness on both sides but when I change it back to like 900 900 so I put the anchor point all the way to the right it's not all the way like it was before but I'm just showing you guys and now when I rotate as you can see, the left side is more empty than the right side when you're rotating, as you can see. And that's what basically the anchor point is. And the position, like I just did, it just changes the um, position of the video. This is the x-coordinates or the horizontal. I don't really think it's called the x-coordinates, but I'm just going to call it the x-coordinates because sometimes there might be three. And this is the vertical position of the video, how high it is or how low it is. And this is moving it left and right. Let me reset that. This is the scale. And first off, when you see it, you're like, what the heck? Why does it have a chain here when all these others don't? And what the chain is, is if you, if it's enabled, if you move one of these, like if you move the, if you change the size of the vertical areas, I mean, let me just try and explain this, but there are two of these because one of them is for the thickness and one of them is for the height. I think that's how you say it. I hope you guys get what I'm saying. But if it's chained together or linked or whatever you guys want to call it, it's called constraint properties, proportions. And it's going to have both. So if I change one of these, it's going to uh, make both the thickness and the height of the video larger in the same percentage so if I put this 170 as you can guys can tell it went to 170 on that one to 100 it went to 100 on that one too but if I unlink this it's only gonna be make it's gonna if I move if I change the the scale of one of these like the thickness it's gonna just change that and look look at that pretty stretched out Ugh. and if I make the height it's pretty stretched out it's just changing one of them but if you link it when one of them okay so when you if you link it and these two are not the same it's not gonna change it back to normal but it's just gonna start uh, changing it by changing both so if I move this to 110 it's gonna move that up by about 10 so like if you add a percentage to here that's how much percentage is gonna be added to this and this is not a math class so I'm not gonna be really going too much into that I'm just gonna change this back to normal I could have just reset it and rotation is what we just went through this is the rotation itself and this is how many times it rotates so if you keyframing which I'm going to go over in a few after a few more things I show you guys it's gonna be rotating multiple times between the keyframes so right now if you're not keyframing and if you're just rotating it's not it doesn't matter what you put this on unless you start keyframing but let me change that back and opacity is how much of the video is showing like if it's like a half like I'm gonna just show I'm just gonna show it to you guys I'm gonna low and decrease it and you guys will notice what I mean by that see when I decrease the opacity the video is going away it's disappearing and if it's a zero the video is not there anymore and everything is rendered out huh? see it's just a black screen so it's pretty easy to render that but after I put it back to a hundred the video is back and I know it's I'm not really good at explaining that, but uh, whatever. That's uh, like just disappearing the video percentage of it and like leaving a percentage of it there. And 
I'm just gonna go over the audio really quickly. It's not much, but so basically the audio you can look at the waveform here. I think I already got I showed you guys this, and this is the waveform and like you can tell that this is probably a beat or something or the bass or something or something really loud happens because it's a dramatic rise over here. Let me just preview that. Oh well, I can't. You can't really tell on this video, but. Anyways, the dB here, I think I already told you guys this, but if this is on zero, that's the normal volume of it. But if you add in more, it's going to get louder and louder. So let me just add in 10. Let's compare that to zero. Let's compare that to minus 10. That's basically what this is. I don't think I really need to explain too much of it. And yeah, that's really quiet. And if I put it up to something like 50, you can barely hear it. All right, let me just reset all of this. Oh, I gotta change it myself. Zero. And now I'm gonna be going through. I'm gonna go and maybe I think it's time. Actually, you know what? Sorry about that. I'm gonna show you guys blending mode first. So let me just add this in onto this clip right here. And as you can tell, even though I added this in, this video is not showing up. And the reason for that is because this video, this video is a layer ahead of it. It's on top of it. So if I move this down, this video is going to be the one showing up, as you can tell. And before I start everything, if you've noticed, this is 1920 by 1080 p and the composition settings size is 1280 by 720p. So this is not the actual size, so I'm going to go ahead and change the scaling of it like I showed you guys. And what I have found out is if you go to 67, that seems to be the best of uh, when you're changing the scale of it. I'm gonna put it at 66.5 or 67 seems to be the best, but I'm just gonna put it at 67 because for some reason it's got this dark border, and I don't know if it's that if that's from the video or if that means I haven't gotten everything in. So after I've changed that, if you notice right here it says normal and normal, and since this one is normal, since both of them are normal, there is the one under it is not gonna be playing, but so if you change the layer above uh, uh, blending mode, it's going to allow, it's going to change how you see this. It kind of changes the opacity and the color, the way the colors are, the opacity of the colors. And I'm not going to really go too much into detail because I'm not really an expert on this, but uh, they have a lot of things here. So you can experiment yourself and check. Like you can, you see it like, well, let me just see. Uh, after I change it, you can kind of see this layer here. And it didn't really change the opacity of it, but like the colors, the opacity of the colors have changed. I think that's the closest thing to what it actually might be. And here it looks like the colors from the first layer have gone to the second one. Or I don't know. Let me just change some stuff up. But the mm, the things that you will most likely be using when editing is add screen and light, lighting, lighten. And in this situation with this sort of uh, video, lighten seems to work the best. So let me just... Uh, put this under the intro and let me guys just act like you, okay so let's say let me just start over so let's say we're just the end of the video and it ends with this little cinematic here and like for example I use this little OCC intro at the end of my one clip contest videos that I used to edit and so you want to you don't want to end it with just this with a black black background because I mean you could do that but if you want it to look really cool you can actually change the blending mode of this so let's say this is where the video ends right here let's okay this is where the video ends so let's try and s like move it a little bit over here so you can see a little bit more of the intro itself so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna just change the blending mode of the top video and to add lighten or screen and lighten seems to be the best in this situation and as you can see the intro is popping up pretty nice and it doesn't it didn't really uh, change the um the way the the video in the background is and the the way i think the the light lighten screen and add is is that it drops down the opacity of the black and dark colors of the video as you can see, the light colors are showing up, but the black background isn't. And if, let me just show you, like, if this video wasn't here, this has a black background right here, right? And the dark colors aren't really there. Like, 
this dark purple let me just show you guys this dark purple doesn't really show up over here it's pretty opaque and so that's what basically the um, blending modes do it just changes the way the video is shown and if I move the video over here it's actually gonna not gonna show it well it's not gonna be like it was before because now this video is on top and the blending mode of this is normal and it doesn't matter what the blending mode of the bottom layer is so if I change the blending mode of this to lighten now you can actually see the intro again yeah um that's about it for the blending modes there's a lot more here like dissolve and all that but I'm not really gonna go through that let me just show you guys yeah uh, dancing dissolve all these color burn and I want to tell you guys how so to duplicate split clips so you can uh like, I'm gonna show you guys so to how to like duplicate and split clips so you only have a part of the clip so you're gonna find a part of the clip that you want to duplicate I mean to that you want to split and you go over it like let's say this is what I want to duplicate I mean split because the snow is gonna be actually no 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 this is when I want to split because I want the video to start from here on out so I'm gonna click on the f uh, part when I want it and the layer go over here to edit and then split layer you can also use a shortcut but I'm not gonna do that I don't even I I don't know what okay let me just do a shortcut actually uh... let me just look at the shortcut again up command C yeah I don't know I don't know a shortcut to it so I'm just gonna go up to edit and split it and you can actually remove this by clicking delete or going up to it and clicking clear like going up here clicking the thing and clear I'm gonna undo that because I want I want that and now I just have this clip starting from here and first and if you can if you notice there's gonna be a little opaque version of the color of the clip and I mean color of the layer and that's the part that's split it and you can kind of change it back you can kind of change it a little bit by holding on to it and when you see the two arrows and then going over here to change the amount that's actually split so uh, you can actually uh, maybe I'm gonna split it over here instead of splitting it from here maybe I wanna split it from here so I'm gonna change it to this and then I'm gonna move it over here so now the video starts all the way from here as you guys can see that's how you split the clip and you can like put it back if you move it around you can put it back to normal by doing that and a duplicate clips is pretty easy it's the same thing you just click edit and duplicate it's not the same thing but you just go to the same spot and that's how you duplicate a clip so now like, you can make it if you for some reason sometimes you would want to duplicate clips and edits and whatever but yeah that's about it for basics part two due to the video getting so long I'm gonna leave out uh, keyframing tutorial and basics part three yeah I'm gonna make a part three to this and yeah um it's gotten so long, it's already been like 20 minutes by now, so the keyframing tutorial is going to be in part 3, so stay tuned for that, which will be uploaded after 15 likes on this video, hopefully soon after 15 likes. And yeah guys, hope you enjoyed. Comment, like, and subscribe if you haven't already. See ya!